Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be taking a look at this album by the band The Faces. It's their record, Ooh La La. So yes, I will um, just be doing my usual thing in, in this video, giving a bit of background and information about the album, then showing you my vinyl copy and then looking at each of the album songs in detail. So this was the fourth and final studio album by The Faces released in March of 1973. For those who don't know, the Faces were formed out of like the remains of like the sixties mod band, the Small Faces. Like after their leader Steve Marriott like left, like left like that band and formed the supergroup Humble Pie with Peter Frampton. So the remaining members, Ronnie Lane, Ian McLagan, and Kenny Jones, like were like looking like for like a replacement like for Mario. However, they couldn't find someone who had both the amazing vocal abilities of of Mario and like also like his like talents like on guitar. Like so, they had to um, recruit two people who were Rod Stewart and Ronnie Wood. During the late sixties and early seventies, they gained a reputation as one of the best live bands of the era. Now, quite interestingly, um, the faces output ran in tandem with Rod Stewart's early solo albums. However, by the time we got to this album in 1973, Stewart's solo success was was kind of beginning like to overshadow like the faces. Like the faces like at least again like, at least again like the public eye like were beginning to sort of um, seem as a simply like a backing band like for Stewart like which like they definitely were not. Apparently tensions were quite high like in the studio after Stuart failed to show up like for like the first few recording sessions because he was apparently like out promoting like his like solo success and um, album and um, never a dull moment. However the result of that meant that this record was a lot more evenly balanced than previous Faces albums like without like, the other members writing and singing a lot more especially especially like Ronnie Lane like who kind of dominates like the second side of this album. So when the album was released it did get a lot of positive critical reviews and that like, did also reach number one on the UK charts and this was in spite of like Rod Stewart's like comments like at like the time like in various interviews calling it a stinking rotten album and a bloody mess. However this did uh, piss off the other guys like in like the band like rightfully so like especially like Ronnie Lane like who had kind of felt like a little bit like dismayed like at like their front man's comments like about like the band like this was like the group like which he had like sort of founded like in like 1965 like kind of like was suddenly like being sabotaged like by like its own like lead singer to sort of like further his own like solo success like it was quite it was quite it was quite selfish like off like Stuart to sort of say like that's a rubbish album like buy my sort of solo record like instead they were kind of like um it was a very sort of like unique situation like where like the faces were kind of like competing like with like their own lead single like for like radio airplay and like record sales so Ronnie Lane like left like the faces like very much soon after this album like was released like they would kind of like stumble on like for like a few years however by 1975 I think they had like finally decided like to call it a day and like Ronnie Wood like went on to join the Rolling Stones and like Kenny Jones um, would would join the Who like when like Keith Moon like died so anyway, um, I will now show you my vinyl copy of it. This is quite, this is quite a nice copy. I have got, like, I bought this one like when I was over like in America. So it's a nice, um, it's a US uh, promo pressing, like a white label promo, like which is like quite unique. Like you rarely see these like over like in, over like in like the UK. So there's the back of it there, just with pictures like all of like the members. And then it's got quite unique packaging. It sort of like opens up like this with all the chat listing and credits and then pictures of them down there. And then the records come out the top here. So you get um, the record itself, which as I said, this is a white label promo on uh, Warner Brothers here. And then it also comes with a nice poster, which has all of the lyrics on it as well, which is really cool. Again, this was kind of like um, sort of like mid seventies, like the height, like of like the extravago like album packaging, like everything in everything that like, had to have posters in it, and, and this one's even got like a like interactive like element as well because if like you pull this down, like the wee guy's face starts to move as well, which is really cool, like quite unique design there. So yeah, that is yeah the vinyl record looked at. Okay, so and I'll go over each of the album songs. So there's ten tracks in total, so I'll score each track out of ten, and then those scores will be used to give us a overall percentage marking for the album. So 
the record begins with a song called Silicone Grown, which is a really great sort of rocking start like, to the album. Lyrically, it is quite suggestive, basically like addressing like a female like who's had like um, breast enlargements, basically. But, you know, the track, it adds great momentum to it. Stuart puts in a really sort of blustering and like vocal performance. Really, despite all of like the inner turmoil like in like the band, like they could still really like play their socks off and like this track is definitely proof of that. So yeah, uh, so yeah, it's a great way to kick off the record. And then the next track up was the single from the record and it's called Cindy Incidentally, which is just a really great pop song. It's quite short, quite sweet, but it's just got really nice production on it. I love, I love like Ronnie Wood's like guitar playing like on it, really just like nice, like sort of very sort of free flowing guitar work right throughout like the track. Again, like Ian McLagan plays some great piano like on it. It was a, it was a big hit for the band, reached number two on the UK charts and like rightfully so, because I think it is a really wonderful track. This night I was walking by my cry. Next up now we soften the pace a bit with a song called Flags and Banners, which is um a more kind of softer, sort of folky like acoustic track sung by Ronnie Lane this one here. Like although it was written um Although like it was like co-written like with Stuart like in and um, lag like, interestingly like again considering like all like the tensions like within like the band, but yeah like and um, Ronnie Lane like he's not the greatest singer and he does sound slightly strange like sort of like singing like this song because he wasn't like he wasn't like the vocalist like in like small faces either like he only sort of started really really doing lead vocals like when like the faces like kind of like started like he would get like maybe like one or two songs per one or two songs per album like whereas here he starts to sing like a lot more frequently and like sometimes it works unfortunately though for me like on this track he does sound a little bit like sort of like strange singing it plus the actual song itself is very short it, it's short it just clocks in at over two minutes long so it kind of sounds a little bit like unfinished like kind of like content wise but it's not a bad track there though so i would give it a seven out of ten Okay, so the next song up is called My Fault, which is a more sort of like an upbeat track. It has the kind of sort of classic faces sound on it, like on this one, that sort of like a great like, sort of like upbeat like guitar playing on it. Like um, again, like Rod Stewart's vocals, just really powerful. Um, and like, yeah, it's just a really good song. Lyrically, it's about sort of being true to yourself and like not sort of changing your flaws. So like, it's got lines on it such as take me as you see me and like, and like never try to change me or rearrange me. Like it's like another line like on it. Um, although unfortunately for me though the track doesn't maybe stand out as much as some of like, the others like on the album it's not a song which I sort of like instantly think of but it is um, again pretty short it's only it, it it's only just over three minutes this track but as usual for the faces it is just a lot of fun and um, and like yeah like is another worthy addition to the album Forgot which closes off side one is called Bostral Boys, um, which is again this one begins with just a real sort of rocking riff and like this kind of like sort of like klaxon sound I call it like as well, and then like Kenny Jones sort of thumping drums come in, and it's just a really rocking track. It's almost punk like kind of like so like four years like before like um before it's just got a, such sort of energy and like power to it lyrically it's another like interesting song about the goings on like in like a youth detention center like so like that was like a bostral and um, lag is like what they had like in like in like the like 60s like early 70s for sort of like and um, delinquent youth like to go to and that and um, like so like it's kind of like the goings on like in like there so yeah like it's it is a good song it just really rocks hard and um, like yeah like great way to close off uh, the first side Unfortunately though, side two opens up with what for me is the weakest track on the record. It's called Fly in the Ointment and it is pretty much lives up, lives up like to its name kind of like it's like it doesn't really uh, do much to serve the album and um, it, it it's an instrumental track co-written by all members except Stuart and it has this really sort of like propulsive feeling to it. McClacken plays some great organ on it but for me the track um like it could have been developed further like, I think like with like some like good lyrics put to it because it does get a little bit tedious. It's only 3 minutes 48 seconds but it feels like it goes on like for like a lot longer than that which is quite a bad thing so yeah um so yeah like not a massive fan of that one. Fly in the ointment would get a 5 out of 10. I miss you at the stage 
Next up though, could be my favourite song on the album possibly, it's called If I'm On The Late Side, which is just a really beautiful, understated ballad. Um, Rod Stewart sings this one and it is just really, really nice. It's got a great melody to it, great lyrics, also big props to Roddy Lane, like who not only co-wrote the song, but also plays a really great bass part, which is kind of like, it maybe sounds a little bit like unfocused, like, but it's kind of like sort of like Paul McCartney sort of bass playing. It's just sort of perfect like, for the song. Long. Like a lot of these tracks, it's very short and like to the point, and I definitely think it would have lost a lot of its beauty, like if it had been sort of like extended out like to about four minutes plus. Like as it is, it's two minutes thirty and it is just perfect. So yeah, like I would give that one the full ten out of ten. Next up is another brilliant song and like another sort of softer, mellower track. Like this was kind of like the first like, sort of like the first time like really like the faces like it kind of like took things slower and like sort of like done like these more sort of like introspective tracks and like that was all down like to Ronnie Lane because this is a this is a solo like composition by him and it's a song like as a duet between Ronnie Lane and Ronnie Wood and it's got a great melody to it and a sort of quite sort of melancholic feeling but yet very hopeful like as well like as like the title like glad and sorry like would like suggest great lyrics on it as well like such as like and um, like can you show me a dream can you show me one that's better than mine it's just got a real sort of like longing quality to it so yeah that's a, a song which i again absolutely love and um, another 10 out of 10 for me you can go if you want to up on the album is called Just Another Honky, which is a another Ronnie Lane solo composition, but this time sung by Stuart, and he sings this one very well. Again, it's about sort of like the it's about the regrets like felt like at like the end of a relationship. Once again, McLagan plays some really nice piano like on the track. For me, it's maybe not quite as sublime like as like the last two songs, and like it and like when it's on, it is very pleasant and like very catchy. Like however, it's just a a little bit hard to sort of like recall like how this song goes. Like, because maybe it maybe doesn't quite stay with you too much this track but when it's on like it really does so i stand out like as like a really really good song so i would give that one like an 8 out of 10 for that like i do like genuinely really like the song I wish that I knew what I know now. and then we close the record with the classic title track ooh la la which is a kind of sort of um stripped back sort of country style song like which like lyrically at least like um is like sung like from like the perspective like of like an old man like sort of like singing like to like his grandson like about his life experiences. The chorus line, I wish that I knew what I know now, like when I was younger, that bit like kinda like directly like sort of shows that. And um, it's this song uniquely though as well is actually sung by Ronnie Woods because he was encouraged to sing this song like song like by producer Glyn Johns like after both um Stuart and Lane like um apparently tried to sing it like like, however neither of them were satisfied like with their own attempts like so like ronnie wood sings this and like it was apparently like his only ever lead performance lead vocal performance like on like a basis record definitely a wonderful track it has certainly grown in stature like since like it's released like on this album like having been used in, in many films and commercials over the years so yeah ooh, so yeah ooh la la great way to close off the album would we'll get a nine out of ten from me Yes, overall, this album would score 84%. So I think this is a really, really, really fantastic album. I think it shows the different sides of the band well, like kind of like um, Stuart's Stewart's and Woods sort of more sort of swaggery and like confident like rockers like and stuff like My Fault and like Bosch Your Boys and Silicone Grown but then also the more sort of like introspective side like off like off like, off, like the band like through like Ronnie Lane on tracks such as If I'm On The Late Side, Glad and Sorry and like the title track as well Ooh La La. For me personally I do think Rod Stewart did need the faces because they were a absolutely fantastic group like off like musicians who, who always sort of like served the songs well but done so in a very sort of like light-hearted but like still sort of like full-on like sort of like rock and roll like sort of way and um, I'm like personally like I'm like not a massive fan like of like Rod Stewart's sites or like other solo work like he definitely like did experience like a like creative decline like kind of like after like the faces that broke up although like commercially like he kind of like skyrocketed and became like one of like the 70s like biggest superstars. I do definitely feel though that Ronnie Lane like did get like short shifted like through like this whole like process like because like he was a very talented songwriter who's like kind of like 
both bands he'd been in, like, had, like, kind of been sort of, like, cut short, like, by, like, the lead singer's sort of, like, own ego, like, in, like, some way. Like, however, like, he, like, then, like, afterwards, like, he formed, like, his, like, his, like, solo group called uh, Slim Chance. Like, they had, like, um, they were more sort of, like, country, like, sort of, like, style, like, direction. However, then, tragically, like, in, like, the 80s, like, he was, like, diagnosed with MS, like, which kind of, like, sort of, like, crippled him, really. Like, he couldn't, like, he couldn't really, like, sing, like, anymore. He was in, like, a wheelchair, like, for, like, the last, like, 10 years, like, of his life. So, yeah, like, very, very, very sad ending there, like, for, like, Ronnie Lane. And, like, and, like then, like, of course, like, Ronnie Wood, like, joined, like, the Rolling Stones. And, like, Kenny Jones, like, played drums, like, drums, drums, like, with, like, The Who, like, for, like, a few years. So they all, like, kind of went off and, like, done different things. But I think it would have been very interesting to see, like, if, like, they'd all managed, like, to stay together. Like, the faces, like, could have, could, could have become, like, one of, like, the 70s, like, sort of, like, very best, like, sort of, like, most enduring, like, rock bands. So, yeah, that has been come to the end of this review. I hope you have enjoyed, and I will see you all next time for the next one. Goodbye. Can you show me?